Hi everyone, welcome to another Stu Kent Expert Session. Today we will be hearing from Melissa Agnes, author of Crisis Ready, Building an Invincible Brand in an Uncertain World. She is a leading authority on crisis preparedness, reputation management, and brand protection, as well as a coveted speaker, commentator, and advisor to some of today's leading organizations faced with the greatest risks. She's the editor of the Crisis Ready blog, a contributor to Forbes, and has been featured in the Wall Street Journal and USA Today. As a university guest lecturer, Melissa teaches crisis management in university courses around the world, such as NYU and McGill. So without further ado, I will turn the time over to Melissa. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Hello, everybody. I am excited to be talking to you today about how to become crisis ready and thus how to build an invincible brand. So I wanna dive in because I've got so much to share with you. So let's start by actually defining what it means to be crisis ready. To be crisis ready today means that your entire organization, every single member of the team, understands instinctively how to detect a rising risk or threat. They know in the heat of the moment how to quickly look at that rising risk and, or threat and assess the potential impact on the organization. And from there, they know and they're empowered to respond effectively in a way that doesn't just manage the situation, but that actually manages the situation in a way that increases stakeholder trust and credibility and goodwill within the organization. This is what it means to be crisis ready. It means that the entire team is equipped to do these things and empowered to do these things in real time. And in this day and age, we have never before been in a time where this is so essential because the reality is that issues and crises can strike out of nowhere. And in my opinion, there's no better example to demonstrate this than the situation that Crock-Pot found themselves in in early 2018. So in early 2018, if you remember, the show This Is Us aired and uh, in this particular show, they showed how one of their beloved main characters, the patriarch of the family, Jack Pearson, died and he died the storyline is he died on account of a generic slow cooker not a crock pot but a generic slow cooker short circuiting while he slept putting flames to the house and he died on account of smoke inhalation now the next morning after this showed air aired people were so compelled so emotionally compelled by this storyline and so dramatically scared that this could happen to their families that they associated that generic slow cooker with Crock-Pot, of course, and Crock-Pot woke up the next morning to find a frenzy of emotions where their customers were so upset that they were threatening to throw out their Crock-Pots and never use the brand again. So Crock-Pot woke up to a fictional storyline where a fictional character died as a result of a generic slow cooker short circuiting and yet they faced this rising threat this rising risk that actually potentially had material impact on or could have had material impact on the brand because people were so upset that they were threatening to never trust or use this brand their crock pots ever again this is the world that we live in today. And the reality is that the longer we take to respond to whether it's a crisis or a viral issue, the more crisis response penalty the brand suffers. Why? Because the longer we take to respond to a viral issue or a crisis, the more we lose control over the narrative of our own story. And the more trust and cred credibility we risk losing with our stakeholders, with those who matter most to our business. So therefore, the, re the crisis response penalty, the CRP, can be very dire. So in this day and age, we have these risks that can come at us from anywhere. We have the fact that those risks can quickly go viral and quickly actually have or threaten to have material impact on the organization over the long term. And yet the longer we take to respond, 
the more crisis response penalty we risk suffering. So it's more important than ever before to be able to detect a rising risk, to, res to assess its potential impact on the organization, and to respond in a way that doesn't just manage the incident, but actually manages it in a way that we can increase stakeholder trust and goodwill and credibility within the brand. And that is what it means to be crisis ready. So I'm going to give you three essential steps for you to take that you can take now that you can take moving forward as a professional uh, when you start working with an organization and actually begin to implement to uh, enable your teams to become crisis ready and to start building brand invincibility. Because the reality is that when we can do these things, we can weather any blow that the organization may encounter in real time in such a positive way. And that is when you build true brand invincibility. So let's do this. The first step in becoming crisis ready is to understand or define the difference between an issue and a crisis for your organization. This may sound simple, but the reality is that today it's very easy for an issue to go viral in a negative way. And it's very easy to take to look at that viral issue and think, oh my goodness, it's a crisis. But virality is not the indicator of a crisis. That's not what we need to look at because issues can go viral and still not amount to crisis level. So if we're going to be able to respond effectively in real time to a negative event, we need to make sure that the team understands what an issue is versus a crisis for the organization. So let's do that. I'm going to give you a high level definition of both crisis and issue, and then I'm going to make it real for you with an example. So a crisis is a negative event or situation that will stop business as usual to some extent. It stops business as usual to some extent because it needs to be escalated to leadership because it needs their decision making and their guidance. The reason that it needs to be escalated to leadership is because this negative event or situation threatens long-term negative impact on one or all of the following five things. People, the environment, business operations, the organization's reputation, and or the organization's bottom line. Long-term negative impact on one or all of these five things. Crises stop business as usual for this reason. This is, you know, long-term negative impact on people, environment, business operations, organization's reputation, or the organization's bottom line. Whereas an issue is also a negative event or situation. But the difference is that it doesn't stop business as usual because it doesn't require escalation all the way up to leadership. Issues are basically... Um, a form of regular business as usual, but on a hyperdrive. The reason being that an issue does not threaten long-term negative impact on people, environment, business operations, reputation, and or bottom line. However, that is not to say that an issue does not need to be detected and responded to in real time. Issues that are mismanaged can quickly and over time and or over time develop into crises. So issues are essential to manage correctly. And the more we manage issues correctly in an, in an effective way, the way that we're talking about here, the more brand um, equity and stakeholder trust we gain from managing those issues correctly transforms into giving the organization the benefit of the doubt in the crisis which is in a crisis which is a very very powerful uh, place to be and that comes from effective issue management so let's not undermine the importance of issue management however it's still important that if you're going to respond correctly you need to understand the difference between issue versus crisis for your organization so let's make this real with an example in 2017, the Oscars suffered a situation. I don't know if you guys remember, but I'll paint the picture. So La La Land was, a name, was named the winner of the coveted Best Picture Award. Everybody from La La Land got up onto the stage and started giving their acceptance speeches. And all of a sudden, it became clear that, oops, 
La La Land wasn't actually the winner. The winner was Moonlight. And then this whole embarrassing scene happened on stage. And four days after the Academy Awards, every the story went viral and everybody was talking about the crisis at the Oscars. Now, I want to ask you whether you really believe this was a crisis for the Oscars. And let's compare and contrast this situation with the definition. So did this situation stop business as usual? It didn't. It was it was business as usual on hyperdrive. It was a situation that needed to be managed, but it didn't require leadership to get up and come and manage the situation. Why? Because it wasn't the Oscars' fault. This situation did not threaten long-term negative impact on people. It didn't threaten long-term negative impact on the Oscars or the Academy Awards operations, on their reputation, or on their bottom line. And let's face it, a crisis for the Oscars would have been something like a terrorist threat or an explosion of some sort. That would have been a crisis for the Oscars. So this was an issue for the Oscars. It was an issue that went viral and that needed to be managed, but it was an issue nonetheless. Now, on the other hand, let's look at PricewaterhouseCoopers. So PwC is the accounting firm that has been responsible for counting the ballots and handing off the envelopes at the Academy Awards to the, to the announcers for decades upon decades upon decades. They were the ones who made the mistake. I want you to imagine leadership, uh, you know, the uh, partners of PwC who were sitting at home that evening watching the Oscars on their television. What do you think was their reaction when they saw what was happening in real time on camera and they knew that this was their team's fault? They probably jumped up out of their seats and the next day it clearly was not business as usual. Why? Because they needed to, they needed to manage their relationship with the Oscars. They certainly did not want to lose this relationship. They certainly did not want this situation to impact their reputation. I mean, if we think about it, customers might have been saying something like, or they risked at least saying something like, if you can't hand off the right envelope, how can I trust you with my money? So this situation stopped business as usual to some extent for leadership, and they needed to put measures in place to mitigate any long-term negative impact that this situation actually did risk having on the brand. This was a potential crisis for PwC. We have the same exact situation, and we have two different organizations, one of for which this situation was clearly an issue, nothing further. And on the other hand, we have this other organization, same situation, and it was a potential crisis that stopped their business as usual and that they needed to promptly and effectively manage. It is essential that your organization, that you bring this with you when you start working in organizations, that you understand the difference between issue and crisis. That's how you're going to be able to detect a rising risk in real time and properly assess it, which as we know, is part of the secret ingredients of becoming crisis ready and building brand invincibility. So that is your first step, define issue and crisis for your organization. The second step, is to take those definitions and to consider your worst case scenarios. Every organization has a series of high risk, high impact, most likely types of issues and crises that they are the most susceptible and vulnerable to. In order to be crisis ready, we need to be in a position to prevent the preventable and prepare for the unpreventable. In order to do that, we need to know what we need to prevent and prepare for. And if every organization has highly likely issues and crises that are the most you know, high impact types of scenarios to, that they are vulnerable to, then it's essential that you understand or define or identify what those scenarios are. What are your organization's most likely high impact issues? List those out, speak with your team, gain some knowledge around that. What are your organization's most likely high impact types of crisis scenarios? Here I've given you um, a list of some high level, common, high risk crisis scenarios 
Now, these scenarios don't apply to every single organization. As we saw earlier, def, you know, crises, crisis scenarios are different for every single organization. But this is a, you know, a high-level list that are common throughout different organizations to give you a head start in preparing or looking at what crisis scenarios look like. So step two, step one is to define issue versus crisis for your organization. Step two is to take the time to have conversations with different members of the team throughout the organization and to clearly identify the most likely high impact, high risk issues that can strike your organization and the most likely high risk, high impact crises that can strike your organization. That is step two. Step three is to then take a 360 degree view. This means that if we need to prevent the preventable and prepare for the unpreventable, when you have your list of high risk scenarios, you want to dive into each one. We've, we've already said it. These are the most likely types of incidents to strike. So you want to understand them. You want to understand them. You want to be prepared for them. You want to prevent them to the most extent possible. You want to understand really what the scope and impact is on the brand and on its people. And then you want to go a step further. You want to take a 360 degree view of your stakeholders. Now, the reality is that crisis management is about people, putting people above process and bottom line always. Crisis management is about people because people are the reason that any business is able to operate successfully. Whether we're talking about you know, team members and employees to clients and customers to vendors, to investors, people are the reason that businesses operate successfully. Therefore, crisis management is about people. And yet, in my experience as an advisor, I have yet to come across one organization whose leadership has a consolidated list of each and every one of their stakeholder groups. This continues to flabbergast me because People are the reason that the business operates and crisis management is about people. We can't meet expectations in real time, respond effectively to sustain and uh, strengthen relationships if we don't first really truly understand what those relationships are, who they're with, what the expectations are so that we can meet those expectations and strengthen those relationships. This is step number three, is really taking a 360 degree view of each high risk scenario and of the people that matter to your business. When you do this, you can take each your list of high risk scenarios and you can compare and contrast it to every single one of your stakeholder groups. So you could say in high risk scenario one, in crisis scenario one, what will our employees, how will they feel? What will they expect of the brand? And how can we be in a position to meet those expectations in real time? How can we put our teams in that position to do that? In scenario number one, what will our customers or our clients expect of the brand? What will the, be their emotions that we need to address? What will be their key concerns that they will expect answers to? And how will they expect us to deliver those answers? Will they expect us to pick up the phone and call them directly? Well, they expect us to take to social media to listen to their concerns and to communicate with them in real time on social. Will they expect or will they instinctively navigate to our website where they will expect answers to their most pertinent questions? These are all questions that we can address now, that we can answer now. We can look at what are, you know, what questions will they anticipate now for each one of those high risk scenarios and that's one of the luxuries of identifying our high risk scenarios and diving deep into each one is to truly understand what the scope and impact is where our vulnerabilities and strengths lies but also when it matter when it comes to people what will they expect what will they feel and how can we put our teams in a position to be able to instinctively know this and be in a position to instinctively respond in a way that exceeds or meets those expectations so that we can come out of the situation with even more trust and goodwill and credibility built up. 
They're three very easy tasks, and yet they are three essential, extremely powerful steps in becoming crisis ready and building brand invincibility. Define issue versus crisis for your organization. Consider your worst case scenarios for each of those categories, issues and crises, and take a 360 degree view into each of those scenarios and into your stakeholders because crisis management is about people, understanding the people that matter most to your business and that what they will expect of your organization in a crisis and putting your team in a position to be able to understand what risk looks like, so therefore how to detect it, understand how to assess the scope and impact that it threatens on the organization. So is it a crisis? Is it an issue? What do they do with it? And understand to, how to respond in real time in a way that meets stakeholder expectations. If your team is in a position to do this, then you can weather any storm that comes your way, making you crisis ready and allowing you to build an invincible brand. If this is interesting to you, if this is something you want to dive further into, then my book, Crisis Ready, Building an Invincible Brand in an Uncertain World, was, was written, was designed for students and professionals alike. It is currently used as textbook in so many courses across North America uh, for communications and crisis and risk management, PR, et cetera. So if this is interesting to you, these three essential tips are your first step. And if you want to go deeper into them, then I encourage you to look into uh, getting yourself a copy of Crisis Ready. It is a fun, engaging read. I hope that will take you and take any organization from any point that they currently sit on the spectrum of crisis readiness straight through to every single you know, piece of the roadmap required to building an invincible brand. So there you have it, the three steps to build to becoming crisis ready and building an invincible brand. If you have any questions, you can always, you know, Melissa Agnes, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to answer them. Um, crisis Ready is also available 